All right, so welcome to Chess in the Romantic Era. Uh, again, for those in the YouTube channel, my name is Pepe Cuenca. I'm a Spanish Grandmaster. Glad to be here with all of you. And again, I would like you uh, to participate in the class. So questions, comments, etc. Everything is welcome. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I will be talking about the evolution of chess in the Romantic era. Uh, as you guys know, uh, in the Romantic time from the 15th century to the 19th century, people uh, playing chess were very aggressive. They only care uh, about attacking the opposite king, opening files and sacrificing everything. But they didn't care much about prophylaxis, positional play, etc., etc. So, to talk about this evolution during the uh, Romantic era, I'm going to talk about Paul Morphy. Do you know who was Paul Morphy? Yes, right. So he was uh, a great American chess player. Uh, he had a brief but, but a brilliant chess career. Uh, he quit chess very young, but during his period, he was considered to be. Uh, the best player in the world. Um, all right, so he was from, from the States, but he traveled to Europe to play the best players in the world. For example, Andersen or Lowenthal or uh, Stoughton, even though he didn't manage to play against Stoughton because Stoughton was given a lot of excuses and <laughs> finally they didn't have a match. But people considered that Paul Morphy was the best chess player in the world in that, in that time. So to talk about this chess evolution, uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to explain you the structure of the class. So in the f I'm going to show you two positions or two games from Paul Morphy where he finished uh, his opponents in a spectacular way. And then gonna, I'm going to show you two games where uh, one can see that they didn't care much about uh, prophylaxis or positional play, of course. Uh, we always talk from the deepest respect we have for them. And in the final two games, I'm going to show you the evolution of chess from Paul Morphy. So he was probably the first player who influenced the way we play today. So his play suffered a revolution. So he started to, to think about uh, strategy and tr strategical play, prophylaxis, etc., etc. Okay, so this is the first position that corresponds to a symbol he, uh, he gave in, in New Orleans in 1857. And he had the black pieces and he was a really strong player in tactical play. So as you can see, uh, both players have two minor pieces, two rooks and one queen, but white is three pawns up. Black's to play. And if you do nothing, you're going to lose, yeah? So <laughs> because now your, your knight on d4 is attacked. So let's try to think about how you finish your white opponent in this position. OK, and I always talk about the forcing moves. In order to, talk tactical, to solve sorry, tactical puzzles, you always have to take into account captures, checks, and threats. So let's start with the checks. For example, you, what's your name? Kevin, tell me, how many checks can you give in, in this position? Uh, black checks? Yeah. So queen h2 is a check, right? But that doesn't look very good, right? Knight f3 is a check. Knight f3 is a check. Too good. Not too good because of g takes, right? Mm -hmm. And then what else? The other check? Knight e2, right? Oh, yeah. Knight e2. Yeah. So we got three checks. We got captures as well, right? So tell me how many captures you see in this position. Uh, I see two, no, three, three. three. Queen takes h2, h2, right, same. Uh, what else? Rook takes e3, rook takes e3 and yeah. rook, 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 rook takes e3 and yeah. rook takes e4. Okay, is any of this move have any sense for you or make any sense? One. Rook c3 doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. But rook e4 is interesting. Uh, queen h2 Queen, e two, queen h2 is just terrible move, yeah? <laughs> so, 
But rookie four is very interesting. And in this forcing move method, after one capture, again, you have to go on in the process and then try to compute all the checks, captures, and threats. Can you thread something? Rook H8. Rook H8. Rook H8 is threatening checkmate, but after H3, nothing happens, right? Yeah, you saw the solution, yeah? Uh -huh. I mean, you, you, you found it, yeah? Yeah. OK. Oh, OK. Let's wait for the others. So beautiful. what's a beautiful combination Morphe saw at oh, this point? I see. Tell me. Knight, knight G3. Amazing. Yeah, knight g3. You are threatening checkmate, right? Or almost a, a checkmate because knight e2 is really strong. And then the thing is, if white takes on h7, then you finish, yeah. finish it. Uh, knight d2. Exactly. Knight d2, e2, checkmate. Yeah? So this is what Morphe found in the board in a symbol. Not an easy task, right? So takes on e4, queen takes e4, knight g3. If white takes on g3, then queen takes e4, right? And then black's winning, right? So just two positions to show you how strong he was in these types of positions, OK? So let's go to the next one. And then whoa, let's put this training mode. All right, so Morphe had the black pieces in this position. He's a pawn up. You know this game, yeah? Okay. Yeah, I I went through your YouTube channel, so not to repeat some so much stuff because I uh, I know you saw the Evergreen game, the Opera game, so I wanted to do something different with this lecture. So um, Black's a pawn up, but it's not clear at all. So White played Bishop e3, Rook b8, and Long Castle. And it looks like it's not that easy to make any progress, right, in this position, because c5 is not easy to play because just d takes c5, right, Kevin? And then what would be your plan, Kevin, in this, in this position with black? How would you try to, to make any progress? Uh, you could capture the bishop takes h2. Yeah. Takes Do you like that move, bishop takes h2? No. No, right, because the bishop is spinned there. Then okay. Yeah. Okay. You s you said the solution, but we have to see which one works. The move that Paul Morphy found in this position what was Rook takes f two, a brilliant move. Because after bishop takes f2, there is a brilliant continuation. Kevin, tell me. You said you saw it. Rook b2, and then if I just take it, some food for free for me. Queen a3, king a1, queen king a1, sorry. Bishop b4, okay. But even though if I just played bishop e1, Take and take, and then I have two rooks and one and two bishops, and you have one queen and one bishop. So white is better. No problem. You are doing good. Let's go back. This is the key moment where Morphe found another brilliant continuation. Queen e3. Checks, captures, and threats. Can you threat checkmate in this position? Maybe it's not easy to 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 find queen a3. But if you follow this method, forcing moves method, let's, uh, let's threat check mating one move, queen a3. Makes sense? Oh, it makes sense because black, uh, white can take on a3 because uh, there is checkmate on after bishop a3, right? So queen a3, brilliant move by Paul Morphy. The thing is you can take on a3 because of bishop takes checkmate, but white still can defend the position. How do you defend the position? Queen c3, all right. Queen c3, the problem is, what's the problem? Queen a2 or bishop f4, right? Bishop f4, only move rook d2, and then you can just take, for example, on a2, right? 
So after queen a3, the most natural move to, to defend is c3, exactly. And Morphy played queen a2. What's the threat now? He wants to go queen a1 and queen b2 checkmate, right? So different alternatives for white. For example, white could try to go queen c2. Now after queen a1, there's king d2, and then the king escapes. So how do you finish white now? Yeah? Oh, just like the king, bishop f4. Yeah, bishop f4, exactly. And after rook d2, there are several alternatives. But for example, e3 is just very good. And black is winning. So in the game, OK, white played b4. b3 is just not possible because of bishop a3, right? Checkmate. But b4 was played. And Morphy continued with queen a1, king c2, queen a4, king b2 was played. And now a big boom. Kevin, think like Morphy. Sacrifice everything. Open lines. Kill the opposite king. Come on, Kevin. You can do it. I know that. Sacrifice everything. Uh, um, Open lines. A5? Sorry, A5? Close, close. It's, uh, the idea is correct. You want to open the B file, right? Uh -huh. Adi? Bishop B4. Exactly. Well, well played. Bishop B4 was played. C takes before, rook takes before. And basically, white has to sacrifice the queen. Otherwise, there's, there's going to be checkmate on B2. For example, king C1, queen A1. And after king c2, queen b2 checkmate, right? OK, so white had to go for queen takes b4, queen takes b4, king c2, and another great move by Paul Morphy. This bishop is doing nothing right here. It's a handsome bishop, but it's doing nothing, right? How do you bring it into the action? Adi. Bishop f5 is interesting. The idea is correct. You want to give some check. But now, for example, bishop e3 and blocks this diagonal. So e3 first. e3 first. You win the tempo, and then this bishop is coming with a check. So takes, takes, and then white had to resign a few moves later. For example, after bishop d3, what would be, what would be the killing move? OK, you saw that. Rat. Again, forcing moves, checks, captures, and threats. Let's keep some checks. Yeah, you can play like queen a4. Queen a4 is one check. Tell me all the checks. Queen, four, um, queen c5 is a check. Queen c5. And then queen, queen c what? Queen, queen c4? Queen c4. Yeah. Yeah, because it's so queen, yeah. Maybe you don't imagine this yeah. move, but as you go step by step, analyzing all the yeah. checks, you will find the solution. Right. right? So you can use the mathematics. Just step by step yeah methodically so queen c4 just wins a game you can take and then after king goes you just take the bishop on d3 and then white has to resign right all right so okay the game continue e3 bishop takes rook d3 queen c4 king d2 check on a2 and then the rook on h1 was hanging and the rook on d3 so uh, Edward Henry Edward Burr had to resign. Okay, this is the second position that I show you to see how strong Paul Murphy was in, in this kind of positions. All right, so let's just try to analyze his weaknesses. Okay, not this position, the next one. Train. Okay, mm, this game was played between Murphy and Lowenthal in London, if I remember correctly in 1858. It's wa it was uh, his first match against a tough opponent in Europe. And then after this, he went to Paris to one of the cafes. Okay, before, in this century, chess was played in cafes. There was no, there was no St. Louis chess club. And uh, <laughs> there were no chess clubs, but people used to meet in, in cafes to play chess. And in this position, Paul Murphy played f6. And now, uh, as I told you, uh, Paul Murphy was a really aggressive player. So taking that in, a, taking that in, in account, what 
Morphe played in this position with the white pieces. Now that you know Morphe, Adi, uh, thinking like an attacking player, what would you play here with the white pieces? Bishop h6, but maybe that's too much, right? No, the idea is correct. You want to take, you want to threat bishop h6. So in order to threat queen g4, exactly. You are thinking now like Paul Morphy, the best player in the 19th century. Oh, all right, so they were uh, obsessed with attack, yeah? But this is not the correct move in the position because you have to think about prophylaxis. What does black want to play? Here. So black would be extremely happy if he could exchange these two bishops, right? There would be no bishop h6, and then you could use the d file to exchange some heavy pieces, right? So Daniel, what would you play here with the black pieces? Um, pawns and bishop d5. Exactly, correct. So this is precisely black's idea. c6. Rook d3 and bishop c5. And suddenly, white's attack doesn't have any sense. Because now you can't take on h6 because there is a pin. So queen g3, rook d8, and everything got exchanged. And then white hadn't any trouble. Actually, Lowenthal won this game in some king end game later. But the point is, prophylaxis is very important in chess, not only trying to kill your, uh, the opposite kin, right? So now that you know that black's plan is to play c6 and bishop c5, how do you stop that? Okay, you know, you know, Kevin knows. Rat. King h1. King h1. King h1 is interesting, but can I play c6 anyway? Where do you want to go? Rook d3 and then bishop c5, right? Sorry? Uh, bishop d2. Yeah, okay, that's possible, but... Now you see that black has developed well, and then he's planning to exchange some pieces. Yeah, rook g3. Still, there is some attack, right? Let's say maybe king h7 and queen f7, something like this. But there is a much more effective way of stopping c6. Adi? Uh, Bishop e5. Perfect. Now you have played better than Morphy. So rook d1 was the best move in this position. It's a move these players were not used to, to play because they were only thinking about attack, attack, and opening files. OK, they didn't have the tools we have today. They didn't have chess base. They didn't have database with games to check, right? They, they had to create their own positions to study chess. And they didn't have engines, engines, sorry. So rook fd1 is a brilliant move because now black can't play c6. The thing is, Lowenthal could try to go rook a d8 in order to do the same stuff. But now, how do you stop against c6? Adi? Queen d3. Perfect. Perfect, queen d3. And you can see that now black can barely move his pieces. Meanwhile, we can play c4, a3, b4, threaten c5, and then black's never going to be able to play c6. And there's a lot of pressure in this position for black. As I told you, c4, b4, all these moves are coming. And then black is in a lot of trouble. So this was the correct way of playing. But he went for queen g4, and then he got nothing. All right, I'm going to show you another position. This corresponds to a game between Daniel Harbitz and Morphy. Daniel Harbitz was one of the best players uh, in that period again. And here, this is uh, an isolated um, pawn position. They were not really experts in this period, uh, in these types of positions. And at this point, white played Bishop g3, really natural move. Mm, you don't want this bishop to be captured by the knight on c6. And can you tell me natural moves for black here in this position? 
Yeah. Bishop d6. Bishop d6. Rook c8. Bishop f6. Bishop f6. All natural moves. Exactly. Kevin, give me another move. F5. F5. You are thinking like Morphe. Aggressive play. But you see that f5 has a problem, right? Yeah. The pawn on a6. You don't want to blunder it. So the other reasonable move could be knight f6, right? Very typical in this type of structure in order to put pressure on the d4 pawn in order to give this bishop free diagonal, right? So rook c8, bishop f6. Bishop d6 maybe have the same problem as what happened in the game because bishop f d6, knight d5, he takes d5, and now this bishop is clumsy. So the diagonal is closed. And then c5 is going to be a weak square. So after this bishop are trade-off, then some rook can end on c5. And then this bishop is much better than the bishop on b7, right? But in the game, Paul Morphy played king h8. A really strange move, right? Because they were aggressive players. He wanted to go for sure f5. He loved to advance the f5 pawn. But in this position, that doesn't make any sense, right? Because f5 is actually never possible because the e6 pawn is hanging. So in this game, rook e1, uh, bishop f6, he realized that f5 was just not a good idea. Bluff. Yeah. So bishop f6, queen e4, attacking on h7, threatening checkmate, g6, knight takes, Good move by Harpitz, closing this diagonal for the b7 bishop. Queen takes, queen takes, and knight e5. And then they reach this position where now you can see that white is much better. You just have to realize about the difference between these two bishops. And then white has the two open files, the c5 square, and this bishop is just basically doing nothing, yeah? Kevin? You like this bishop on c6? Mm -hmm. No, right? Doesn't have any diagonals. So it's a terrible bishop. So Morphy ended up losing this game. And the key moment is this king h8 move that doesn't make any sense. Now we're going to go to the next game where Morphy start the revolution of his, of his, of his play. And then maybe the revolution of chess. Because he started to think about prophylaxis, positional play, and maybe he was the first player who did that and then who influenced the way we play today. Well, we, not we, but the top players, yeah? <laughs> we blunder everything. I blunder everything too, Kevin. So let's go to the next game where one can see this change. And he started to play like the hypermodern school. The hypermodern school was to build, let's say, 70, 80 years after he died. So, do you know what were the principles of the hypermodern school? To, to give away the center and then attack it. Exactly. So, the classics thought that you have to occupy the center with your pawns, but uh, the people from the hypermodern school, for example, Reti, uh, they thought that you can give up the center, but you can you can control it from 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 some distance. Let's say with the fianchetto bishops, and then you can attack it, right? You can strike on the center with your pawns. For example, the Grunfeld. Let's uh, I'm gonna show you what's a Grunfeld. The Grunfeld uh, d4 knight f6 c4 g6 knight c3 knight c3 d5. You can see that after e4 knight c3 b takes c3. Why is in control about all the center, right? But black is going to put a lot of pressure. Uh, these are ideas from the hypermodern school. You're going to play bishop c7, g7, sorry, c5, knight c6, and all your pieces are striking in the center, right? So the next game that I'm going to show you, Paul Morphy plays like that. And he wins this game basically doing nothing. Not brilliant attacking sacrifices, but only thinking about positional play. And I'm going to show you this game, which is very, very interesting. So e4 was played, c5, d4, okay, knight f3, knight c6. This can transpose to the normal order, right? 
By the way, Kevin, if black plays e5, what would you play with white? Mm. Would you take that pawn? No. Uh, are you sure? <laughs> no. Why, why? Because black will go queen a5. Exactly. Queen a5 check and then takes on e5, right? Okay, but you can just play c3 and then there's a lot of compensation. A lot of weaknesses and white is leading in development. So, all right, so we reach this Sicilian e5. You know the name of this defend, Adi? No. Anybody knows? Lowenthal. Low you have the name right there. Lowenthal. He created this defense. It's very, very interesting. And here, Morphy didn't play what's considered to be the best move nowadays, the best move knight that five. knight b5, right? Aiming to go for the weak square d6. Avia Lukowski. Sorry? Avia Lukowski. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's not the same order, right? Because in, in this world uh, championship match, they normally knight c6, knight d4, knight f6, oh, yeah. right. oh. knight c3, and then e5, knight b5, d6, we have seen this opening like six times in the whole championship match between Fabi and Magnus Carlsen, right? Knight d5, this, this. So this is a, a pelican. No. Sorry? This is a pelican. Yeah, this is the pelican. You guys know that bishop g5 is the main idea, the main line, sorry, but Fabi was trying to win with this knight d5, which is very, very interesting. Okay, so e5 straight away this is the low and tall. knight takes e6 okay this is not considered to be the best move because now you are giving black uh, some center right b takes e6 and now black is in good shape because it's controlling d5 anyway it's perfectly playable bishop c4 knight of six and here the most natural move maybe is knight c3 controlling d5 protecting e4 but paul morphy played short castle what do you think about this position? You think it's okay to take on e4? Do you think it's a bad move? Or? I see a way to lose. Hmm? You see a way to lose? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we, we'll come to that. You can take it, yeah? Okay, knight e4 is a, it's a, it's a good move. But the point is, what do you play after rook e1? D5. Oh. D5, and then? Boom! Uh, uh, oh! Uh, wait! Wait! Ah! <laughs> uh, uh, wait! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You saw that. It, okay, <laughs> still it's not the end of the world. Because now you saw the way you can lose, right? After d takes e4, bishop f7 just wins on the spot. King e7, bishop g5. Still, you can play here d takes e4. You can take. Yeah, rook e5, bishop e6, and then white is a bit better. But okay, at least you don't lose the game, yeah? <laughs> After d takes e4, you lose the queen. So, but the simplest way of playing this position is just knight f6. And after rook e5, bishop e7, queen e2. Queen e2, you could be scared about this move, but after d5, there's no trouble. You're gonna put your bishop on e6, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna go short castle, right? So let's say bishop d3, and you can even try knight g4 here. There is no proper square for the rook. Maybe you have to go to h5 or something, which is, which smells bad, Kevin, right? So, yeah, but Lomantal got scared, and he went for d5. d5 looks natural, right? So you control the center, but then Morphy, it's gonna play like the hyper mother school people say. I'm gonna attack the center with all my pieces. And he did that, and he won the game. I'm gonna show you how. So, we take on d5. Ooh. Take on d5 now. Bishop b5 check, yeah. Bishop d7. Yeah, queen e2 is also possible. But I would say I can play bishop d6. And um, yeah, but it's it's also a normal move. But he took on d7 and then he attacked the pawn on e5 with a most most natural with the most natural piece, with the rook, right? So rook e1 is 
is more natural. Yeah, rook e1, bishop d6, and now bishop g5 is possible. You have to choose. We have to attack the center, so we can play knight c3 or bishop g5 or c4. C4. I'm just gonna collect the pawn and then ask you what, what you wanna do. Knight c3. Okay. But I am going to go short castle, and then draw a pawn down. You have to justify what you did. And here I don't see a clear way. Knight d5. Knight d5. Okay, it's interesting. But at least I can just play rook a d8, even though if you captured the pawn on c4, you got nothing, right? This is completely equal. So, so no, let's just play natural moves. How do we attack the center? You have to choose between bishop g5 and knight to c3. Well, normally, supposedly, when you have hanging pawns, you want them to advance to make them weaker. Exactly. So I guess knight c3 is Yeah, and there's a concrete reason, because if you play bishop g5, the move is knight e4. Exactly. Knight e4, winning a tempo, this knight is not pinned, so you have to go back, and then maybe I can play queen e6 or something, and still looks good for, for, for black. The point is, after knight c3, it's not easy to protect the d5 pawn. Kevin, what would you play with the black pieces here? d4. And then, Adi. Uh, punish. Punish Kevin for what he did. <laughs> Look at this, King, on the center. Oh, queen exactly, perfect. Queen takes e4. Ow. Oh, Kevin, now what? <laughs> so... After knight c3, you can play d4. Ooh, the bishop. Bishop, c7. bishop c7. And now it makes sense what you guys were saying before. So, bishop, <laughs> bishop g5. Now there's no knight e4. And basically, I don't see a way of defending the, the pawn on d5. Maybe rook d8 or something like this. But this smells really, really bad. Even bishop f6, queen f3, and then rook d1 looks really good for white, right? So, Murphy thought he was much worse here in this position, and then he started to get a little bit crazy because it was not easy to defend. Maybe the best move is queen e6, now that I think about the position. But it's not a natural move to, to put the queen in front of the rook, right? Maybe we can even continue with bishop e g5 and then put some pressure on the center still. And then this looks very good for white. In the game, uh, Lowenthal played e4. And now, can we capture on d5? No! Are you sure? No. No way. Why? Yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> so knight d5 is just losing because of knight takes d5, knight, queen takes d5, and bishop h2. And then you win the queen. So what do you play here, Kevin, then, if you don't take on d5? You want to take with the queen on d5? No. <laughs> so how do you increase the pressure on d5, then? G3? With, yeah, with this move, you're increasing the pressure on D5. Yeah, he wants to put the you want to put your king safe, yeah? Uh -huh. Or king H1. King H1, all right. Like Morphe to push the F pawn. No, I guess only takes the D5. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's. Yeah, now you will be threatening to take on D5. I agree. But. Looks dangerous. For example, knight g4 and then f2 is weak. But it's interesting, the idea. You want to take on g on d5. There's another way of eliminating a piece that defends d5. Who defends? Who defends d5, Kevin? The knight. Then? Exactly. Bishop g5. You develop another piece. And then you want to take on f6 and then you would be able to take on d5. Right? Okay. So bishop g5... And basically, black can, can do anything. So for example, I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say here. Let's say bishop e5, just take, and then 
Knight takes e5. This is just a pawn up. The e4 pawn is hanging. The king is still on the center. If you go short castle, I win the queen on the spot. So very hard position for Lowenthal. I've, as you can see, Murphy hasn't done anything special. He just strike in the, uh, has strike in the center and nothing else, right? So, okay, Lowenthal wanted to, to, to get everything messy and he went for knight g4 here. And, all right, what would you play here? Okay, Morphy took on d5, bishop takes h2, king h1, the rook on a8 is attacked, right? So black has to do something about this. He took on d5, knight takes d5, and now you are threatening different stuff. You are threatening the pawn on e4, a fork on c7, and the move f3. Right? So basically, black can't handle it, everything. He went for short castle, and now... Adi? F3. F3, perfect. And this is how Paul Murphy won the game in 16 moves versus Lovento, one of the best players in the world. He did nothing special, right? But it was a change in his play, and a change in in the play of the players in general. So takes, takes, knight e5, and then rook at three, e3 was played. After bishop g3, f4 just wins on the spot. So f6, king h2. So yeah? What about the, the back, back, like back, uh, back one, yeah, king two three. Sorry, g3. Yeah, g3. g3. Probably it's also winning. Let me think about it. But for example, now it would be tougher for you to, to capture one piece. For example, after f5, you can't kick my knight from g4. My pawn on e4 is protected. Probably you're going to play king g2 and rook h1, and you'll get two pieces for the rook, but it's not a free piece. With f3, you win a free piece, right? Adi? Uh, can you play knight e3? Knight e3, oh, brilliant. Yes, 93, exactly. It also wins. Good, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Anything like back is exchanged, like 93 takes e3. Yeah, bishop takes and f4, yeah. right? f4, yeah. Bishop takes, rook takes f4. Yeah, you don't win so much material as in the other variation. You win a free piece, just go for it. So. This, is, this was a game between Morphy and Lowenthal, and I'm going to show you one last game, which is one of my favorite games. It's uh, very good from the positional point, positional point of view. And Why did you ever, did you ever play knight f2? Knight? Back, back up. Knight yeah. f2. Here? Yeah. Okay, it's uh, White's turn. So, for example, here. Short castle, f3, knight f2. But I then... All right, but then the bishop on h2 is hanging. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the point. So you kick this knight wherever, wherever this knight goes, I'm going to capture this bishop on h2. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, let's take one or two minutes to think about the position. So Murphy is driving the, the black pieces against Harbits. Harbits was considered to be one of the best players at that time. This match was played in Paris, in Paris, France, L'Amour. And Morphy, okay, let's just try to analyze the position. Morphy is attacking with the black pieces, with the queen on h4, the rook on h6, and it's white turn. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he always <laughs> moved the f one. Yeah? <laughs> So what would you play with the white pieces here? First of all, what do you think about this knight on b4? It's, it's in danger or it's a good knight? Yeah, it's almost trapped, doesn't have proper squares to jump, right? Mm -hmm. It's doing basically nothing, yeah? So what would you play with the white pieces here? Give me the can candidate moves. So, Adi, uh, one move. Sorry? 
E4, okay. Let's just try to mark them on the chessboard. E4, what else? Knight B5, okay. Sir? A move for white here? <laughs> I'm not gonna take another chance. Okay. <laughs> All right, Kevin. A three. A three. Something else. You? Oh, I wanted A three. I don't know. A three. Yeah. Carla. Uh, no, I think there is a trick against A three. Okay. What's the trick? I don't know. I'm sorry. You wanna give me checkmate already? Okay, the thing is, this attack is not so strong anymore, right? Because whenever you go queen h2 or queen h1, this just king just runs into f2, and then this queen is attacked. So, whenever you go back to h4, I can even cover with my queen on g3, or can even go back to g1, right? Okay, e4 is a bad move. Why? Because if you go f takes e4, knight takes e4, white, black wins on the spot. Queen h queen h2 followed by rook f4 right so e4 is not a good move also this bishop is doing nothing even though if you take with the rook on e4 right to stop rook f4 this bishop can come back to c8 and then it will enjoy a good diagonal so not a good idea to play e4 in this position then what else? Okay, let me just remove everything here. All right, where are black weaknesses in this position? C what? C seven. C seven. Okay. A seven. A seven. Okay, these are weak pumps, but weak squares. Oh, E six. E six. Also, F five is a pawn which is not. It's also a weakness, right? Could be a weakness, a potential weakness. So the knight on c3 is well placed or it can be improved. It can be improved, right? So for example, one of the best moves in the position was knight e2. In order to go to d4, putting pressure on f5 and going to e6. Harbits played a3. It's maybe the first move that comes to our minds, right? We think that this knight has to go back to a6. And then what would you play with the white pieces here? Adi, b4. But has the position of the knight uh, improved of the black knight or it got worse? It has improved actually. Because of the Morpheus move, knight to b8, the knight is much better here. Sorry down here because now in two moves it's attacking so this is very natural but it's helping black and morphe probably five years ago or something he would have gone crazy and trying to try to to go for some g5 attacking the black uh, the white skin but he started to play positionally and he went for knight b8 slow maneuver intended to go to f6 and then to g4 to cut the f2 square for, for white skin and then threaten some checkmate on h2 okay knight b8 was played and knight e2 now harvitz realizes that the best square for knight is on d4 okay let's try to think about prophylaxis Rook g6. What are you stopping? Oh, okay. I was stopping knight g3, but he has knight d4, right? Yeah. So, yeah. white's plan is not to go to g3 with the knight so because it doesn't do anything there. C5. Sorry? C5 is a brilliant move. It's a very good move. Okay. Morphy didn't play c5. He went for knight d7. Maybe much more natural. Intending to go to f6. But c5. It's a brilliant move because it stops the knight coming to d4, and if white takes some passant, then this bishop comes to life, yeah? All right, so c5, very good move. Knight d7 was played, 
and here Harbits played knight g3. He followed Carla's idea. He wa he was very scared about Black's attack, and he wanted to go king f2 and rook h1 and trade some rooks. But maybe here the best move was queen g3. After queen h5, then knight to d4, putting pressure on f5, and after, I don't know, something like g6, 96, and white could be better, right? But instead he went for knight g3, and now g6 was played by Morphy and king f2. He was obsessed with the black's attack and he wanted to exchange a pair of rooks. Knight f6 was played by Murphy. Rook h1, knight g4 check, king g1, queen f6. You don't want to blunder your queen. Rook h6 and knight h6. And we reached this position where <laughs> this knight took a long journey from b4 to eight six <laughs> <laughs> he's so tired now and um, all right so queen d1 was played and knight to g4 black wants to go to h4 with the queen queen d2 and queen h4 by murphy you want to go queen h2 and take the knight so prophylaxis knight f1 you can't take my knight and also you can't give me ch check on, on h2 right Rook e8, good move. Putting pressure on e3. G3 and queen h3. And here, Harvitz was scared maybe a little bit about the move c6, right? Because maybe you want to break with c6 and try to give some pressure with this bishop. If this bishop manages to enter in the game, it would be very dangerous for white, right? So what do you do to stop c6? B, queen g2, okay, queen g2 doesn't stop c6 because after the trade of queens, you play c6 and then maybe you're in a bit of a trouble, yeah? Takes, takes, and then suddenly this bishop is really, really good. But b5, b5 stops c6 and I like very much the way Murphy played the, the rest of the game. So, b5. Yeah, okay, he went for knight f6. Putting an eye on the oh, e4 yeah. break, and also, as you say, now c5 is a, is a weak square, and the knight on c5 would be very, very well placed. So Morphy, sorry, Harvitz decide decide to go for queen g2, and this is where I see again the change in his play because five years before he would have gone queen h6 to keep the queens on the board to keep attacking his opponent, but he saw a way. Of, of playing this endgame. After queen g2, king g2, how you think he played in this endgame? A6. A6, what do you say? Uh, A6. A6, adding? Knight d7, Kevin? Knight g4. Knight? g4, okay. Knight g4, the problem of knight g4, maybe white can strike in the center with e4. Knight d7 is very, very interesting. Again, maybe white can strike in the center with e4. Yeah? Knight e4. You can. But the thing is, maybe I can exchange now. And then knight d2. Protecting c4. And then when you retreat your rook, then maybe e4. And this type of endgames, the knight can be even better than the bishop. You don't enjoy a lot of diagonals here. And I think white is okay in this position. But a6 is a brilliant move by Murphy because you're gonna open the a file, and this rook, which is okay here on e8, is gonna be much better placed on the a file, looking for some active squares, right? So a4 was played, okay. a takes b5. You have to take with a pawn, right, Kevin? Mm -hmm. And now, Kevin? Perfect. Rook a8. Occupying the open files. Knight d2. Rook c3. e4. Takes. 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 
Bishop takes. Okay, rook c3 was played first, and now bishop f3. What do you play now with the black pieces? King f7 or rook takes e4? You have to choose between. King f7 is better because if you take on c4, this rook is going to get an active square on e7. The rook on the seven rank controls a lot of squares. And it's hard to to make any progress. Yes, Adi. Uh, uh, Much better. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a move. Rook e8, king f7, and rook b8, trapping the bishop. So you can't even take on c4. That's why king f7 was played. Rook e4 protecting the c4 pawn and now the only piece who is not active. The bishop. Kevin, do you want to go to a8 or to c8? Or to a6? C6. C6? C8. C8. <laughs> All right, c8. Yeah, exactly, yeah? On a8 is doing nothing, on c6 maybe <laughs> it's no. a gift for your friends, but. <laughs> On c8, right? You want to go to f5, and then this bishop is much better here. So the g4? g4 was played. No, sorry, they played bishop e2. After g4, h5, h5 is the move. Exactly. So pawn takes bishop, takes bishop f5, let's say, takes, king takes, rook d4, and rook d3. And then you are forcing oh, white okay. to take on d3. And then the c4 pawn is going to fall, and later the b5 uh, or the d5 pawn. Mm -hmm. So probably the endgame is completely won for black. Instead, Harvitz played bishop e2, bishop f5, rook d4, h4 is hard to play, h5 first, stopping g4, and now king f2, king f6, rook d2, and now, how do you continue? G5. G5, okay. G5, I guess I can take this guy here and then it's not that easy to make any progress, right? Like, for example, rook d4. Hmm? Then g5, bishop d1, to a2. Berg, yeah, okay. Okay. I, I He's saying that it's very interesting to go bishop b1 in order to go bishop a2. Okay, it's really not possible. But the point is, you remove the bishop from the f5 square to go with your king. Mm -hmm. oh. So in the game, Morphy played bishop c2 in order to play king f5 later on. Or even bishop b3, as you say, putting some pressure on the c4 pawn. King e1 and bishop e4. Why not king f5, Kevin? King e1 was actually set in a trap. So why to play a move? Yeah, why play why to play and wins? Oh sorry. Whoop. King f5. Kevin, follow our method. Forcing moves, checks, captures, and threats. And I guarantee you're gonna win this game. Okay. Think about captures. What can you capture? Oh, oh, you see? <laughs> great, great, rook c2. You see, this method is brilliant, yeah? You just go step by step. And then you'll find a solution. Take some bishop d3, right? Awesome. So, but with the king on f2, it's not possible. So, for example, let's say if white plays king g2 and then king f5, rook c2 doesn't work because there is a pin. So that's why king e1 was set in a trap. Now to see if Morphy played King F5. Morphy, 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 Morphy <laughs> realized about this and then he played Bishop E4. King F2 and now we continue with King F5. And what's black idea here after Rook A2? How would you continue? Adi. 
bishop d3 but then all right i can take and then maybe play rook a7 and it get this gets very very messy because you're gonna take my g3 pawn but i'm gonna take your c7 and your b6 and we both start running and i don't know who arrives first there's no need for this maybe it works but it's risky right rook c2 after rook c2 i'm not so sure if you can win this end game for example takes or even no okay rook a7 bishop d3 that's yeah. your idea yeah. but then maybe i can just play king e3 here so i cannot get you in no. i don't think so i can just play bishop f3 bishop e2 or bishop d1 mm -hmm. i have three squares for my bishop and i don't see a way you progress in this position right Okay, so after rook a2, h4. h4, that's the idea. Brilliant. So we keep advancing with our king. So g takes and king f4. And now, Black's idea is very simple. You want to go rook h3, <laughs> and then rook h2, and keep, keep moving. So rook a7 was played, rook h3. Rook c7, and now Kevin finished the game. H2. Rook h2 is very good. Because after king e1, king e now that you have come from f7, you have to keep going. So? King e3. Exactly, king e3. Threatening the bishop on e2, bishop f1, and now finish the game. One more move. You are there. Rook, come on. Rook Perfect. Rook a2. And then rook a1. And Harbits had to resign in this position. So as you can see, this was a game where Murphy improved his pieces slow, step by step, playing positionally. And this was really impressive by that time, where everybody used to sacrifice everything and attack from the move from, from move number one. Okay, guys, so this was the lecture about the, the evolution of chess. I hope you guys had enjoyed and thanks for coming.